And now, dispatches from the general. All right. Shout out to International Women's Day was this past weekend. And I noticed it was on the day we changed the clocks, daylight savings time. So women get screwed on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to all the ladies. And it's on Black History Month, which is the shortest month. Wait, is it still? Oh, no, we're in March now, right? Yeah, we're in March. I got to pay more attention to this shit. Uh, Shout out to uh, everybody down there in Wall Street. We had the largest drop in 10 years on the Dow Jones recently. And, uh, you know, people are afraid of the virus. And um, I said this last episode. I'll say it again. These... These these brokers, these Wall Street guys, they should put their coronavirus masks over their eyes so they can't see the <laughs> Dow drop. Yeah, or, or we should. Yeah, uh, I was thinking I want to get two and put it over my ears so I don't have to keep hearing about coronavirus. <laughs> That's good, too. Um, shout out to uh, Trader Joe, who passed away this week. The great... Um, Grocery store king Trader Joe passed away. We're going to do a roast in peace tribute to Trader Joe at the end of this podcast. And Had no idea there was an actual Trader Joe. Yep, he was buried today in his finest Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Rosie's Dog Beach in Long Beach, California, where I took Luna. And man, that is a fun place. You ever been to a dog beach, you guys? I took Rambo there before. He goes crazy for it. Wow. That's my girlfriend's idea. I was skeptical at first because I was like, Luna's going to kill somebody if I just let her loose at the beach because she has done that before where she runs out and thinks she's saving somebody who's in the ocean (laughs) and she just takes a chomp out of their leg as a warning that they're going to die and they don't always get it. So shout out to all the brave souls who let their dogs run wild down at Rosie's Dog Beach in Long Beach, California. Shout out to all the Bumpin' Mike's fans who will be braving threats of plague (laughs) to come to see us in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and outside of Chicago in Waukegan, Illinois this weekend. Man, I love you guys. I hope you all still come out. It would be heartbreaking to fly to all these places and uh, and the theaters be sold out but no one there the theaters all the tickets are sold this weekend there might be a, a couple of empty seats i hope everybody stays careful if you know they everyone's saying that we should come the show must go on uh so bumping mics this weekend in milwaukee and uh waukegan aka chicago how does the coronavirus affect the actual bumping of the mics? So you're gonna we don't actually bump anymore. You're no, no more bumping? No, air bumps. <laughs> air bumps? <laughs> yeah. All right. Bump and yourself. There's a lot more bumping mics, um, tour dates out there coming up. I hope they all happen. I'm sure they are because nothing stops me and David Tell. We'll be in Kansas City, Des Moines. Where else, Ed? Oh, you'll be in uh, Morristown, New Jersey, Terrytown, New York. Uh, Munhall, Pennsylvania. Where? Munhall, Pennsylvania. You ever hear of that place? Fucking Munhall. <laughs> uh, well, you're going to be at the Carnegie of Homestead Music Hall in Munhall, and they're going to come and let you know that they exist. Uh, Brea, California, four shows and two nights. That's going to be great to see you guys in a small comedy club. That's a warm up for the big taping the next weekend. That's right, and that's going to be April 28th, 29th, and 30th in Not Hollywood. Weekend, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In Hollywood, you got to say where. In Hollywood, at the Comedy Store. You get your tickets at thecomedystore.com. The 30th, 8 p.m., sold out already. Oh, yeah, these shows are going to sell out. I mean, this is really just starting to spread like a virus. Everyone knows (laughs) that we're going to be in Hollywood. Bumping mics, Netflix taping. Um, Number two, three more. Well, I don't want to say too much, but this is going to be fucking amazing. It's part of the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. Are you excited about the comedy festival, Matt? I'm very excited. You're going to have some special guests on uh, on Bumping Mics this time? Can't say who. Let's just say uh, 
Max Van Cedow just canceled. Oh. <laughs> that's a, that's tough. All right, let's start the podcast, everybody. Testing, one, two, buckaloo. Everybody's home. I know you're listening. I'm in my bunker, hiding out. I'm sitting on a stack of toilet paper. I've got a year's supply. Shh. Yeah. So many mixed messages in the media right now, you know? The president's confusing me. I mean, do I wash my hands or not wash my hands? What is what? What if I live in Flint? Do I still wash my hands? <laughs> like, where are the facts? Who should I believe? I'm in show business, so I say the show must go on. We are here back in the bunker podcasting. Shout out to all my emotional support humans. Life is hard. Don't worry. We're going to get through it together. Except for a few older people with low uh, autoimmune systems. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, you know, that's life. Um, there's a, a, a friend of mine who uh, I invited uh, to the bunker. He is a, a journalist, above all else. He's also a major comedy fan. He hosts a podcast, very popular podcast, called The, the Last Laugh. Yep, yep. And... Uh, we might have our last laugh soon if this virus really <laughs> takes over. So yeah, with any luck. With any luck at all. And uh, he's a senior writer for The Daily Beast, where he covers a lot of comedy and political stories. Um, he's a graduate of Columbia University. You majored in mm. theater. Yeah, you did your research. I did. Uh, he's a specialist in uh, censorship and comedy because he wrote an article uh, and interviewed me about that topic That's a couple true. of years That's ago. True. It was a great interview. You can look that one up. Um, very smart, very cool guy, Matt Wilstein. Matt, you know, I know you write about politics and cancel culture, and we, we see what's happening in the world right now. Somebody says something fucked up, or they get a big opportunity, and everybody goes through their old tweets. Yeah. Or they get a big, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's like... It's as if it's as if a doctor like for a comedian for me right now like it's like it's like I'm o it's always it's not that it's not that I'm always worried about saying the wrong thing but it's always in the back of my head mm -hmm. like a doctor who goes like oh, which is the person that's going to die on the operating yeah. blah, blah. could be ten thousand surgeries but there could always be one out there. You know, like, I, it's not that I'm worried about it, but it's always lingering in the back of my head. And I thought, you know, you're maybe you could give a positive spin or, or give me some hope. Well, that, yeah. Has it always been this way? I, I don't think it's always been this way, but I am interested in the idea that some people are grandfathered in. And I, I think you might be one of those people. You're, uh, <laughs> you know, people say that a lot about South Park, like South Park can say whatever they want. No one gives them shit. And, you know, you're the roast master, so maybe you're, you know, you, you get a free pass, too. I like it. But not everyone gets a free pass, especially if you're especially if you're unknown and you get a really big opportunity that everyone's jealous of. Right. Then you're then you're in trouble. So maybe as long as you don't get any really big opportunities, you'll be OK. As long as I still try to reach anymore. If I stay at this yeah. level in my career, I'm safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I you're think saying, so. Yeah. If I want to grow. Yeah, I'm f I, I got to be careful. Or if you want to do uh, commercials, like uh, didn't uh, Gilbert Gottfried got in trouble? I think, but For only because Aflac. yeah, but only because he was the Aflac duck. Like if he hadn't been the Aflac duck, I don't think anyone would have cared. I mean, this guy was saying one word in the <laughs> in the entire <laughs> campaign, and they had to publicly yeah. fire him. And didn't they replace him with someone else who just did an impression? Ben of him Affleck. Saying that? I oh, mean, yeah. how <laughs> that was smart. just what a fuck you to Gilbert. They get the guy who doesn't even he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even need the money. Yeah. But Gilbert, uh, to his credit, has bounced back quite out. Yeah. Admirably. So he didn't get he he got canceled, but then uncanceled maybe. Well, he 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 got moved to a ni a niche dirty comic. Yeah. You know, you high he his career got suddenly defined mm -hmm. when in fact it was not defined, and he of course took that definition and made it amazing by 
doing, you know, the aristocrats mm-hmm. and playing Adolf Hitler on historical roasts yeah. on Netflix. And, it's an all-time and performance. Thank you. I helped write that. <laughs> and um, By the way, when I called Gilbert Gottfried originally and asked him, I said, Gilbert, I want you to play, you know, we're roasting Anne Frank and I need somebody to, you know, play... He di- he said yes before I even got out the lure. <laughs> I was like, I need somebody to play hit. Yes, lure. What? <laughs> so, you know, there is a real need for edgy comedy. Yeah, you know, and well, you know, you know, you you know, I talk to a lot of comedians on my podcast, but you right. talk to a lot of comedians, you know, all the time and work right. with them. And so, do you feel like do you? feel like people are watching what they say any more than they did before i feel like it's always in the back of comedians minds or some for some even more in the front i remember Mm -hmm. um i tweeted something positive for a a a big comedian one time who was having a hard time saying they said something provocative and Mm -hmm. they were so you know getting canceled or potentially yeah and, and i they needed something um positive and you know from friends so i i wrote something just a long time ago and uh and uh the the comedian wrote back uh thank you so much i'll do the same for you uh which let's be honest should happen any day now <laughs> <laughs> well i guess the, yeah that's the other question is have you ever uh have you ever been in that situation like even briefly where you thought oh yes, i said something yes, that i shouldn't yes, have said yes it was about um I upset Ludacris and all the oh. Fast and the Furious fans by making, um, you know, insensitive jokes mm-hmm. about Paul Walker. Paul Walker, uh, um, who, who had only like that. who had died in a car crash. Uh, one of the stars of the movie, and Ludacris gave me a big thumbs down. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't apologize for the joke. I apologize for hurting his feelings. Yeah. And that's always it for me. It's never the joke. It's always the feelings. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the fir- you know, you're allowed to go too far. Yeah. You know, and it's, you know, in your writing, in your journalism, do you find yourself picking a side on that issue or can you see things from um, I, the yeah. sense the, the 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 so-called offended sometimes i think it's yeah i mean it's tough because i i do see it from both sides and i think actually the more i've interviewed comedians the more i see their side of it and huh. see how shitty it is to have somebody you know call you out for a joke or take a joke that you you know take something that is a joke and all of a sudden turn into this big serious thing that that's worth getting mad about um but then, but you know, like anyone, I think there have been things where people, certain comedians say or things that they do where I was, you know, where I did think it was over the line and maybe they they shouldn't have, uh, that it, not that they shouldn't have said it, but just that it's not, it's not for me. It's not, right. it's not, I don't, you know, I'm not well, into it. Sometimes, uh, even if the comedian, I always defend their right to do the most fucked up joke. Yeah. But what I get, what I, what I do see I hate when when those people get fired from a gig or dropped right. from a gig that they blame the joke when in fact it's all it really is 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 it's showing that it's not a good fit like they're mm-hmm. yeah if they're doing a something that's not PC and your show is PC it's just showing that maybe that wasn't a yeah. good it's not a good fit yeah I mean Shane Gillis and SNL is kind of like the the most recent and obvious yeah. example of this where they were I think they were trying to hire somebody who appealed to a more conservative audience maybe because the show always gets labeled as being so liberal and right. kind of one-sided and they thought oh maybe we'll hire this other guy who you know has sort of a different point of view right didn't work out that well right because pretty immediately uh, a lot of people were mad about you know stuff that that he'd said and that's an example of someone who when i saw the stuff that people were mad about i was like yeah that's not great right um you know, I don't know. I didn't. I, I thought they were going to stick to their guns. Or, yeah, I thought yeah. maybe they were going to stick with them and and ride it out. And then because I think they would have gotten huge ratings the first show that he was on, and he would have addressed it on the show. And that's kind of what I was hoping happened. Um, but I also I understand why they they decided they couldn't do that, and they just they just cut them loose. I wish these things happened less in less of a. Everyone has to hear about it. Yeah. You know, the whole world has mm-hmm. to hear this inside dirt 
Yeah. Like everyone loves, uh, you know, I'm offended by people that are constantly offended. Mm-hmm. That's one of my mantras, yeah. my mottos. You know, it's like if you're going to follow a comedian like Gilbert Gottfried on Twitter mm-hmm. or, you know, that's for the, his fans who like him. Yeah. It's hard for me to remember as a comedian like. Oh, you're really trying to, if you want to get retweets on a funny joke, you're really trying to get your fans' friends to see it. Mm -hmm. And I can't really vouch for their sense (laughs) of humor. So that's where the problem starts. And then people screenshot it and they, you know, the outrage culture takes over. I think also if you're going to be on Twitter, you have to know that everyone can potentially see it. Has anyone done a character? This would be a great character (laughs) for a comedian of doing like the over, the either the non-offensive comedian like the <laughs> the least offensive comedian comedian <laughs> in the world or or the most offended fan in the world like like mm-hmm. like audience member He's like offended by everything <laughs> yeah. like finding like when when I took a comedy stand up class um to 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 see if as a hobby like for fun as a young man mm-hmm. uh Lee Frank the teacher said if it doesn't offend somebody somewhere, it's probably not funny. Yeah. It, it sort of have to break some eggs to it's clear, make clearly that a lesson joke. a lesson that stuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's one of those things where you think it was always this way? You think I mean, you think well, comedians well, had this problem? The social media thing obviously makes it worse and makes gives people a I mean, the, what it used to be, I guess, was that the comedian had the platform and then there was not really a great way to for the audience members or someone who was offended to publicly attack them for it. But now that we have Twitter, you, anyone can have an opinion about anything, which on the one hand is good. So everyone can you know, everybody, a everybody democratization. Has a voice, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, I also always say that, you know, the comedian, I would never criticize a comedian or say you can't say that. But I think similarly, the audience members should have the right to respond to it and that's one thing like the um pete davidson and some other comedians but recently pete davidson had a thing where at his shows he had an nda that said if you come to my show you're not allowed to I say anything bag you. publicly no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you're not yeah it's not that kind of nda that he uh <laughs> that he you're not allowed to say anything publicly NDA positive or negative for, about, for people who don't know nda yeah. is north dakota accent. right 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 in uh, a north dakota <laughs> non- non-disclosure accent. agreement uh <laughs> but they were signing away and it said if you if you talk about what you saw in this show on twitter we can sue you for a million dollars what do you think about that wow i think it's great <laughs> i think it's great because guys gals are selling their material now for more money than ever you know, when I first started, a few people a year got a special on HBO. Then Comedy Central came around, and and people got more and more specials. But then they started to break them up in a half hours, and you could do five minutes. And and you know, you know, Big Pete, young guy, getting famous, hilarious dude. He's selling that special, that material for a mm-hmm. lot of money. So he wants to be able to try out jokes, yeah. be provocative, without having to worry about. A recording being mm-hmm. on TMZ or on yeah. some. Yeah, I mean, I get it with a Facebook recording. Page. I think that's a reasonable thing, and I even think the putting the phones in the pouches is reasonable. Not talking about it. They, this was if you just like you. So, so, so for instance, if a journalist wanted to write a review of the show, that would probably that would go against the uh, the agreement. Or even I think if somebody wanted to tweet about it and say, you know, I loved his joke about X. Like I, I think that that's I think that's a little beyond what's reasonable i'm gonna defend (laughs) pete on this one and i respect where you're coming from matt because it's always been where a reviewer can go and review right when i was a young comedian i saw buddy hackett stop a show 45 seconds in because some yenta was sitting there with a notebook in the second (laughs) row and it was like six o'clock and on a sunday the old people show and He's just like, what the fuck is this cunt got a pen and a piece of paper for? <laughs> and the lights came on, and he, it was like the first time I'd ever seen him. I didn't know him. I was just I was working at the comedy club, and I stayed an extra day because I got a free ticket. Um, yeah, well, I think there there is comedians have always had to deal with that, and you got to remember, like a reviewer, you come when you want to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not doing an opening. 
he's you know a comedian just going up. Yeah. Why should any rant? If I'm doing seven shows at the comedy store this week, I should decide which one gets reviewed because mm-hmm. I'm just working out. Yeah. No, I get that. And I, he's and not I, working a major theater. He's working at a comedy yeah. club. You want to just uh, be able to experiment, go too far, miss a few times, so you develop an act that you can then sell to television or, mm. or streaming. Yeah, I try to be very aware of that with my, you know, as someone who writes about comedy, I'm not trying to go write everybody's jokes before they were on TV or, you know, things like that. I probably did a little more of that earlier in my career, and the more I talk to comedians... Because you want the, the article to be funny. It. Well, sure. You want some you want some jokes in there, right? I always but, feel bad when I do like a serious <laughs> interview. I'm like, oh, you will pepper it with some jokes that I already told. On yeah, some, uh, exactly. You know, like, that's what they. That's what you do. You find <laughs> jokes so that it seems like you read the interview and you're like, well, this guy. You got to show that he's funny too. Yeah. So you got to put a little. It's like clips. You like yeah. playing clips. But all all of my interviews with comedians tend to end up being very serious. <laughs> I don't know why. Why is that? I don't know. I guess it's just what I'm interested in is the. The serious you think it's your ex murderer voice that brings it out of them? Yeah, that's probably <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, you do these podcasts where you interview comedians, and it's a great podcast. It's called The Laugh Last. Laugh, last <laughs> laugh. It's really hard for me to say. There's also a wonderful kind of a documentary on Netflix called The Last Laugh um, about comedy during um, traumatizing times, mostly the Holocaust. Oh, yeah. If anybody is interested in comedy during dark times. It's a great documentary. Really cool. Um, they talk to Holocaust survivors about what's funny, and it's just they break That's it down, great. and it's amazing. And Mel Brooks is in it, and Sarah Silverman's in it, and I'm in it. It's great. Um, <laughs> but your podcast has that same title, and it is. It's like redemption. It's where the comedian gets to come on and talk about, uh, uh, if they want, their take on what's going on. And you're, you're, you always ask great questions. And I noticed well, thank you. On, on The Last Laugh, you'll also look for, because you'll look for some buzzy thing or newsworthy moment. And, and I like that because it keeps comedy news relevant. Comedians should be yeah. treated like athletes or any other, or rock stars. Mm-hmm. Like when we, we, there's so much, corporate mush going on in journalism and music and everything comedy i feel like it's one of the last things that doesn't really have to bow as much to the corporate giants we can kind of do what we want still you go to a comedy club nobody's no but nothing's off limits they'll book people that are canceled comedy is the purest yeah so i like that you're writing about it in a way that makes it newsworthy and topical and you know, there were times in America where comedy it seems like it was stale and yeah, not now. No, no, and comedians, you know, generally are willing to talk about this stuff in a in an open way, which is great, and be honest because I don't, you know, I don't think anyone wants to come off as seeming like they're, you know, too scared to talk about something. So that's that's why sometimes if I ask you know tough questions or try to ask about real stuff, then then they they want to talk about it, which is great. What about the evolution of comedy? Have you have you seen anything change since people got touchier? Hmm. How about ethnic humor? Like, is ethnic humor? I think you can be you can do an ethnic joke without being racist. Now that's a tricky thing to pull yeah. off these days, but or without being called racist. I guess that, I guess that's <laughs> yeah. really what you mean. What I mean. Yeah. Um, no, and there are some com- there's some comics who some still, comedians who are still ethnic. Do it, you were yeah. talking to Russell Peters, yeah. who's a friend of that's mine. A, that's a big part of his act is, is, is uh, ethnic jokes and and stereotypes and using stereotypes to. But he's using humor. They're and, not stereotypes yeah. if it's your real mother yeah. and father. Yeah, I mean this stuff comes from somewhere. Mm. Stereotypes become stereotypes because you know I have nagging Jewish relatives. So if I'm going to imitate them. It shouldn't yeah. be ethnic. It should be just my mm. experience. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's also the difference between doing it about yourself and your ethnicity, and then right. doing about about others. I guess if I was like, yeah, my housekeeper is like, <laughs> 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 I, 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 I might not fly in the same way. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I guess. Uh, I guess. I guess part of it, you know, is being well. You got to be good. I mean, you yeah. Know, like, it's not that it's offensive. It's just good comedy yeah. and bad comedy. Like anything can be I don't funny. Ag- I don't agree with a lot of what Chappelle says, but. I'm laughing. Yeah. I don't have to 
Isn't that the yeah? That's a sign of a of a great comedian, right? That you could say, I don't agree with any of this, but I but it's hilarious. I remember my sister, you know, earlier, you know, when we really didn't know what was what. My sister went to see a Ralphie May, and uh, I love Ralphie. I sent her out to Ralphie. He was a good buddy of mine, and she called me afterwards and she said, she goes, I'd never been so offended and so um, laughing so hard at the same time, you know, because. That's kind of what we laugh at is the taboo shit. Mm -hmm. Like life is too serious. Yeah. yeah. And you make it more serious by yeah, analyzing. By analyzing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a, a, a comedian get mad at you? If I ever had a comedian get mad at well. Has to had, happen, right? And yeah, it's happened. I mean, I, I, there's also that thing. I, I never There's the comedian getting mad at me and their publicist getting mad at me, oh. which are two separate things. And I never know whether... It's just the publicist is mad or the comedian's mad. So that's a, that's always a tough thing to figure out sometimes. A good publicist won't let you know. They'll yeah. always take the hit. Yeah. Um, but no, I think people, you know, comics get mad about articles or off, more often headlines of articles that they feel like I took something they said ever so slightly out of context. And, right. you know, um, and that's always that's always a challenge of, of my job is, you know, I want to I don't want to I want to. Um, you know, report real things and and have what I'm writing be compelling and not, but not you know, piss off every comedian that I talk to. You want to still be friends with us? Well, you and not everybody, but <laughs> I mean, it's pretty nice you're here on my podcast. Yeah, after I was great. on your podcast, yeah. So I mean, you you didn't have a bad time on my podcast. I don't even remember being there. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. But um, I swear it happened. You can find it on uh, on on the podcast. Uh, no, feed. if anybody out there has trouble sleeping, just listen to Aww. me and Matt. No, it was a good episode. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I got a lot you, of good yeah. feedback, and you, then you I roasted me a little bit at the end, which was fun. What did I say? Basically, what you just said just now that uh, that, that, <laughs> that I'm too monotone. <laughs> <laughs> You're very laid back too, though. You got to let me, Matt. Let me have you practice saying. Um, um, everybody relax. No, say, uh, say there's a gunman in the front yard, but everyone relax. There's a gunman in the in the front yard. Oh my but, God! But what were those every, shots? I heard every, I heard a noise. But everybody, every, there's there's a gunman. <laughs> Front yard. <laughs> Everybody have ever, relax. Have you ever had a yell fire in a movie theater? No. What would that sound like? It's fire. <laughs> <laughs> I will rubber baby buggy bumpers. Oh, that's just me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck that. That's great. Well, it is great having you here. Um, we have some touchy subjects prepared that are up your alley. I know you also write about politics. Yeah. And, uh, and and other and and world world events. So um, Ed has put some of that together, and we have a roast in peace at the end of the show for Trader Joe, as I mentioned. Um, but we always like to celebrate life on this show. Um, so with no further ado, Ed, I uh, I would like to uh, give some birthday shout outs. Absolutely, your boy Johnny Knoxville. Happy birthday, Turn people. All right, don't say his age. <laughs> nobody wants, nobody movie star wants to hear his age. All right, beep it out. Uh, PJ, you're a legend, man. You're a legend, truly a legend. This guy created his own freaking genre. Hilarious. And uh, one of the nicest guys that I know. Truly. Johnny Knoxville. Happy birthday. Who else? Your boy, Marco. Oh, it's Marco's at birthday. Marco Andretti. Happy birthday, buddy. Awesome. Love you. Race car driver, Marco Andretti, one of the nicest guys. Super nice guy. Um, and, you know, when you're a race car driver, like every year is a freaking blessing. They yeah. risk their lives every day. It's like me performing on a Carnival cruise ship right now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you performed on a lot of cruise ships? A few. Yeah. Would, would you do it again? Um, yeah, it's yeah. fun. Yeah, a couple, not that many. I can't believe anyone's still going on cruises. It's scary, right? Yeah. I know, even Tom it's, Cruise it's, can't get work these days. <laughs> <laughs> Is it time, Ed? It's time for our wonderful Touchy Subjects. Touchy Subjects. <laughs> Neil Young 
has come out and fully endorsed Bernie Sanders for president. That's what we need. More Canadians on, our, on his team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's officially an American. He just oh, became is he a an citizen? American. Yeah, yeah, he's a citizen oh. now. Yeah. That's, there's nothing surprising about that story, Neil Young endorsing Bernie Sanders. Yeah, right. If it was like Kid Rock endorses Bernie Sanders. That's news. That's a story. Right. <laughs> um, well, that's great. I love Neil Young. And uh, he didn't just endorse Bernie Sanders. He did it in falsetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I pulled the lever in the voting booth. <laughs> <laughs> I was dreaming about a Bernie press, hoping it was the truth. Maybe he can replace Flav, Flav of Flav. In Public Enemy. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Maybe 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 you got to make that happen. Put that out there yeah. in, in one of your Daily Beast columns. It's out there now it's on this podcast. Any big I'm stories sure coming listen. out? Are you breaking any hot news right now? I don't know. I was looking forward. I was going to break all kinds of things out of South by Southwest, and then they canceled it. So oh was, wow, uh, man! Yeah. yeah, I was looking forward to that, but uh, so now I'm like, got to got to find something else to do. Hmm. Yeah, I was supposed to be there too. Yeah. That's such a bummer, man. It really is. It's the first time they canceled it in 34 years. Wow. Wild. That probably brings us to our next touchy subject. Yes. The coronavirus is on a tear. South by Southwest has been canceled. Italy's on lockdown. The New York, New Jersey Port Authority chief has confirmed that he has it. De Blasio doesn't want people on the subway. But Disneyland in Shanghai is still starting to reopen. Disneyland is reopening. Yeah. So it was a smallpox after all. <laughs> <laughs> well, the park <laughs> itself isn't reopening. The um the sh- the shops and the restaurants are. Oh. In Shanghai. In Shanghai, but all the parks in uh in China, in Hong Kong, and in uh Japan are closed for the time being. Wow. The ones here are still open, I, oh. I would assume. Yes, the ones here are open and the lines are very short. Yeah. yeah if you want to A lot of deals right now. It's a good time to to travel. My, good, my nephew's yeah. coming to visit. I'm like, g- bargain prices. Yeah. Where, yeah. If you want a hotel in Italy, very cheap. Can't leave, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a couple gigs cancel in Europe, and it's it's it's, it's a really. It's going to have widespread uh, consequences. Hopefully not widespread panic. Yeah. It's, um. yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. If, have we really seen this in comedy? Since you've been, I don't think I remember seeing something like that quite like this since I started doing comedy. That's really just shutting everything down. And uh, I have friends who are in Europe touring, and they're they're afraid that if they get quarantined, they could get stuck, you know, away from home. Yeah, that could happen. It's it's not good. I mean, a lot of people just won't be able to work, and uh, it's it's not good. Yeah, I was I was asking you before: is it are the comedy audiences still coming out? Yeah, yeah, they're all coming out. Um, they were the, the the comedy store was packed all weekend, and during the week too, and my shows this weekend are packed. So, well, the tickets are sold. We'll see if people come. Yeah, um, people are I resilient. So. Americans are resilient. Yeah, I think I feel like your fans will just will just brave it and come out. My fans have nothing to live for, so <laughs> they're coming out. Coronavirus, yeah. be damned. Fuck it. Hmm. <laughs> Pearl Jam just canceled their North American tour. Oof. Wow. Yeah. Ah, such a tough one. Have they done? I know they're talking about doing NBA games with no crowds. Has that happened yet? I that has not that. happened yet. Because that's going to be pretty weird, I think. Um. Well, they already. The Mets already play with no crowds in New Jersey. <laughs> New York, and this baseball, is, so maybe. An Australian newspaper has been printing out extra pages for people to use as toilet paper. What? Yeah, the um, the NT News, an Australian newspaper, has been printing out eight extra pages to be cut out and used as toilet paper because there's no more toilet paper. That's so that, nice. That's, <laughs> that sounds like some kind of marketing gimmick. I don't know. That's great. <laughs> It's been a response to the coronavirus uh, panic where toilet paper has been selling out in stores. That idea is the shit. (laughs) (laughs) The editor, Matt Williams, reported... uh, Don't give that joke a bad review, Matt. (laughs) I won't. won't. That was a solid, solid joke. Thank you. Unlike my shit. (laughs) 
Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you know what happened this past weekend? Instead of, like, even though the coronavirus is going on, there was a, the largest gathering of people dressed like Smurfs happened this weekend oh. in France. Wait, one last coronavirus. Yeah. I think those masks... I should put. I should get one and put it over my mouth so I stop saying the same coronavirus jokes. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? There was the the largest gathering of people dressed like Smurfs ever happened in France this weekend. They were normal people, but they got the coronavirus when they got there. They all they look like <laughs> they Smurfs. Look like Smurfs. <laughs> Smurfs? Yeah, in Lander, now France, 3,549 people gathered to break the world record. For people with blue balls, literally. <laughs> <laughs> France put out a warning to large, uh, for large, about large crowds gathering because they're the fourth highest affected country of coronavirus. Hmm. And on Sunday, they said no more gatherings of 1,000 people or more. So they made it just in time. Oh, wow. wow. Well, I just want to say, you know... Everybody, stay healthy, stay clean. You know what the dirtiest thing in the world must be? I was thinking, you know when you see a, a community hand sanitizer, whether the kind of push down mm -hmm. or push, that button has got to yeah. be the filthiest <laughs> fucking thing in the world. <laughs> right, so make sure you, I mean, whatever finger you touch that with, you better put hand sanitizer yeah, extra, on. Because yeah. yeah. people are coming, their germiest right to that. Mm -hmm. That's after they've just picked their note. Like, they like, I need some hand sanitizer. They've just, whatever. You know what else they can do? What? They, when they get the hand sanitizer, throw a little on the knob. Help out. I like that. Yeah, sure. Give back. All right. What's next, Ed? All right. A Florida hospital employee is arrested for sucking an elderly patient's toes. I don't know anything about this. I wasn't there. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Was it uh, was it consensual or? Uh... Um, I believe it was not consensual. Twenty-three-year-old uh, man, France Belderin, uh, who works as a sitter, someone who sits with patients throughout the night at the Fort Myers, Florida hospital, has been arrested for apparently sucking patients' toes. According to the elderly victim, they woke up several <laughs> nights on an odd wet sensation on their toes, <laughs> but assumed it was a dream or a nurse checking on them. One night, the victim woke up to find Belderon sucking on their toes. Woo. Is this even against the law in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is actually how you spoke. you get your vitamins in Florida. How did, how'd, the, how'd the sitter get this job? I don't know, it seems like they someone fell down on the... Uh... The application process there. I don't know how many people are really applying for this job. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a popular job. He thought, as long as I'm sitting here, I might as well suck this elderly person's toes. It's so wow. The victim drew their foot back, and when Belderin went back to his chair, as if nothing ever happened, he was like, "Oh, oh, uh, nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened, nothing to see here." <laughs> There's a lot of details coming from the victim who slept through the other times. Like, how do you remember this much when it didn't even wake you up the last few times? Oh, man. It sounds like this time was the one that they're actually mad about. <laughs> Hospital security called the sheriff's office, and after the victim reported the incident to an, a nurse, Belderin was arrested and taken to Lee County Jail without incident, and at this time, he remains in custody. I bet. All right. Put your socks on if you're in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lesson here. Shout out to the toe suckers out there, man. It's a hard day. It's a hard, you. tough out there for a toe sucker. I give another uh, interesting hospital story. Okay. A woman plays the violin while a surgeon operates on her brain. She's a violin player and was scared that she was going to lose her musical skills while getting uh, operated on and getting a tumor removed. And so she suggested that she would play during the surgery so the doctor would know he wasn't uh, wow. removing any part of the brain that would obstruct her uh, left so hand. So she kept playing violin while they did brain surgery. Yes. They removed 90% of her tumor and she could still play the violin. That'd be like wow. me getting brain surgery while roasting the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a special right there. I wasn't fucking you with this dick. Uh, ugly lives matter. 
<laughs> Dr. Dre has better bedside manager than me. <laughs> Too bad you don't have face insurance. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is that is incredible. And how is she doing? Do we know? I mean, she's doing well. Uh, <clears throat> there wasn't much of a of a, a second article, but uh, she can still play the violin. She's alive and she's back at work. Wow, playing the violin, amazing. Wow, good, good old Dogmar Turner. She's doing fine. Wow. I love these kinds of stories. I know, but there's a bow he dro- she dropped in her stomach, and now they have to go. <laughs> <laughs> a reed. The, t- turns out the doctor dropped his t- drumstick in there. <laughs> <laughs> the anesthesiologist dropped a guitar pick. <laughs> they did a jam. They were jamming. <laughs> Nice one, Ed. Maybe maybe we should end there, or you have another one. Your boy William Shatner gets horse semen in a divorce settlement. Oh, yes, William Shatner and his divorce settlement with Elizabeth Shatner has won custody of their two of two of their four horses, as well as all of the horse semen. William Shatner will receive visiting rights for the other two horses. Uh, he also will receive any and all equipment used for horse breeding. So he uh, he's very obsessed with his horse breeding, apparently. So horse- only only he's allowed to breed the horses now. Seems like the it. Ex-wife only she gets two horses, no breeding and no semen. No semen. <laughs> you know what I always say about horse breeding? Mm-hmm. Nay means nay. <laughs> <laughs> you just come up with that just now. Shout out to Captain Kirk, <laughs> William Shatner, a uh, great guy and one of my favorite TV icons of all time. <sighs> That's it for touchy subjects. Yeah, those were all touched out. Very touchy, touchy. (laughs) If you're just tuning in, I'm talking to journalist, the Daily Beast senior writer, Matt Wilstein. Um, You also, besides covering comedy, you cross over a lot into politics and... Yeah, I, uh, I've been I've been writing a lot about the the primaries, and um, I have been covering, of course, Trump's response to the coronavirus, which I don't know if anyone saw this weekend. Uh, he, the Surgeon General was on right. CNN, right? And he said um, he they were asking him, you know, should Trump be worried about his health? He's an older man, sure. And this he guy fits the demo this, of people yeah, who could get yeah. corona. So this, the Surgeon General, who's about in his mid forties, said, "No, uh, Trump's healthier than I am." And wow. I thought that was a uh, that was concerning for for that guy for the Surgeon <laughs> General. If Trump's healthier than he is. What's, what's going on with him? What anyway, are you basing so, that on? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. But so I so I wrote that article, and uh, Daily Beast tweeted it out, and this, and early uh, late last night, Donald Trump retweeted it. Oh. And so that was an odd experience for me because I wrote this article that I thought was kind of obviously making fun of this thing that happened. Right. And Trump said this is great for me and he he retweeted it so i don't know how i should feel about that <laughs> that's never happened before <laughs> wow yeah you are for for that moment the president's favorite journalist yep mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't feel great about that <laughs> wow <laughs> you should be you feel safer that's for sure <laughs> yeah yeah he likes me now congratulations thank you man. yeah it was a big moment for someone who only eats with his hands and without silverware, you'd, you'd expect him to be more worried about the coronavirus. He's very fancy, Donald Trump. You know, he retweets with his pinkies. Yeah. <laughs> so classy. <sighs> All right. Well, anything else you want to talk about before we pay our due respects to Trader Joe? I would like to hear uh, how you think about Hillary coming in. And doing podcasting, and she's on Hulu now. Oh yes, this is her new career. She's a podcast host. I don't, I don't know what the podcast is going to be like. Who she's going to interview? She might. I don't know. I assume that she'll just be lecturing us. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, it's, she said, you know, the, Hillary the reason, interviews Hillary. She said she wants to do it because she was on Conan's podcast, right? And she was on Howard Stern, and she had so much fun that she wants to do like a Howard Stern style podcast now. Wow. She's so maybe Hillary is the new Howard Stern. If they, if it would make her um, unfiltered and just yeah. the Hillary that we've heard about that likes to do shots yeah. and this could be crack it. jokes, and that would be it. Could happen. I always <laughs> say if she had be- gone on Real Housewives instead of becoming a senator, mm-hmm. 
Um, she would, she would be president right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> <laughs> that is so uh, sad, but true. <clears throat> yeah, now, we hear so much about leaking. Like, how, w w Do you ever get leaked? People leak stuff to you as a Daily Beast reporter? Um, to me, not so much. But we have some very like real political reporters who are in Washington, and they know everybody, and they're getting all the all the dirt and all the leaks, and and yeah, so that that's real. That's that's happening. Um, they get some good stuff. You never have comedians leak stuff to you, like, "Hey, I'm going to be at the Improv tomorrow <laughs> at 10:50." <10 laughs> I don't know. Yeah, comedian leaks would would be less uh, less uh, controversial, maybe. I don't know, but or more. What about that White House correspondence dinner? Do you think oh. it'll ever be a relevant event again? Or do you could think be again. I mean, if we get a president who has a sense of humor about themselves and, uh, you know, what's a better roast? comedy. What's a better roast, Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders? For the White House correspondence dinner? No, just a better oh, roast. A better roast. Um, oof, they could both, they would both be very good. I don't, I would, I wonder who would take it better. I vote for whoever's most roastable. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like. I feel like I don't. I don't know. I'm worried Bernie wouldn't take the wouldn't take the jokes well. But what are you talking about? I have a very good sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did go on with with Larry David on SNL once. That was that showed some live from New awareness. York. It's Saturday night. Um, I don't know. Who would you like to roast more? What do you think? Where Where is there more material? Uh, I think they're both. I mean, it's pr they're both pretty easy targets. Yeah. But Bernie, you can get him on the policies because, mm. you know, he wants to raise minimum wage, yet he has more people volunteering for him for free than any other candidate. <laughs> <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> there's a lot going on there with the movement. Yeah. Um, but Biden says a lot of uh, stuff that doesn't make any sense. Biden, so that I would just be feel <laughs> like, yeah, he, I feel like his rebuttal would be uh, 45 minutes yeah. long. <laughs> He'd get mad two days later when he figured out what the jokes meant. Uh, <laughs> Hey Jeff, it's uh, it's, it's Vice President Biden. I just wanted to clarify a few things. Uh, <laughs> the joke you made about how I stutter when I'm having sex—that uh, one was accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, though. <laughs> I met him one time, Joe Biden, and he was really lovely. Uh, it was at a USO 75th anniversary event that Dr. Jill, his wife, was on the board of, and. Uh, he was funny. He was like trying to make jokes, and he knew how you know. It was like in the spirit of comedy. It was a comedy event. Yeah. So I think they both uh, both be very roastable. They both have a much better sense of humor about themselves than the than the guy we have now. But yet he's been roasted more than anyone I have ever. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. What a crazy, crazy world, Matt. Well, crazy. Thank you for uh, what you do for comedy. I really appreciate it. Thank you. The podcast is great, and I read all your uh, dumb political commentary about. <laughs> you make it all palatable. Yeah, try to make it all entertaining in some way or another. Do you ever fact check these stories, or do you just print whatever? I just print whatever I want. No. Do you ever write <laughs> fake news on purpose? No. How nobody nobody does that by accident. <laughs> uh, Are you the enemy of the people? I hope not. Are you the enemy of... <laughs> Um, no, Trump loves me. We, we established this already. I know. I can't believe you wait all this time till the end of the show to tell us yeah, that I Donald Trump the, retweeted you last night. I saved the best night. for last. <laughs> Way to bury the lead, bro. Yeah, yeah. Did That's you get a lot of followers? Well, he retweeted the Daily Beast st of my story, so it, which was for the best because what it would have gotten me is a lot of his insane people tweeting at me in yeah. response, which I didn't need. So I think it's for the best. But no, I didn't get a lot of new followers. You'll be part of the uh, Twitter history library yeah. of the Donald Trump presidency. I need more followers, though, so you should follow me at Matt Wilstein. Oh, uh, we're all over it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you tweet about... I, tw I follow you. Yeah. You tweet about comedy and mostly about comedy and politics. Yeah, politics can take and over pop sometimes. Culture. Yeah, pop culture. Have you ever? Have they ever meshed comedy and politics and Never. pop culture the way they are now? <laughs> Uh, Would no. somebody like you and your and your and the Daily Beast have existed? What was the version during the during the eighteen sixties when Abe? Yeah. <laughs> what was the version during the seventeen hundreds? It wasn't quite as much comedy in politics then, as far as I know. Maybe there was, and we just don't know. But we didn't hear about it. You don't remember that you never read about the 
Edward J. Rostenberg, who roasted <laughs> George Washington in 1789, right before his second inauguration. No, I missed that one. Washington's ego was out of control, <laughs> and uh, his lawyer, his buddy Edgar J. Mm -hmm. Rostenberg, this is where the roast started. No, oh, yeah. He roasted his best friend, and uh, the rest is history. It is. <laughs> With no further ado, I think we should uh, pay tribute to a guy I never met, but I was a big fan of. Trader Joe, it's time for you to roast in peace. The founder and namesake of Trader Joe's, Joe Colombe, I think I said his name right, uh, passed away last week. He, uh, Trader Joe's formed in Pasadena in the 60s as a competition to 7-Eleven. Really? Uh, yeah, that's one of my, uh, I really, uh, I like that little fact about them. How many Trader Joe's are there? Hundreds, all across the nation now. It started off here and just it exploded. Cheap, cheap food, healthy, environmentally conscious. It's a great company. Trader Joe. Found at the back of the shelf, well past his expiration date. <laughs> Poor Trader Joe. His coffin was carried by four really nice and helpful lesbians with box cuts. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of folks couldn't make it to the funeral because the parking lot was too small. It was <laughs> really that, that, aggravating. That's, that's very accurate, yeah. His last words were, clean up on aisle me. <laughs> It's a shame Trader Joe had to go, but maybe we should search his house for hand sanitizer and toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> My condolences to his brothers, Albertson and Ralph. <laughs> 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 Let's pour out some mom and milk for the great Trader Joe. Roast in peace. Uh, Ed, great show, man. That was fun. That was a lot of fun, buddy. It's been good. We're we're on a roll. I know. Well, it's nice when good friends reach out, and we have some really funny people coming up in the next few episodes. I love it. Please, listeners, give us some feedback. We love it. Write us notes. There's some good stuff on the website now. People have been writing us. We just didn't have time this episode. But maybe next time we'll read some of the love letters that we get and some of the complaints and some of the suggestions because we do have the funniest fans that is Foa Showa. Matt, do you get a lot of, do you get more like positive um, feedback or negative feedback from your readers? Do people come will, at you? I will tell you, I get a lot, well, for, my, for, the, for the podcast, I get a lot of positive feedback, and except for the one time I got negative feedback was when our friend uh, Kathy Griffin was on. Really? And uh, she has a lot of uh, people who don't like her, so they, get, they got mad at me for uh, talking to her. But, right. You know, they can suck it, so it's fine. You got to talk to everybody, you know. Yeah. You got to, you got to, you know, you're, you're, you got to be a fair. Yeah. People I'll, rely yeah. on you to come to talk about their comedy. Yeah. You're you're providing a service to the community. I'll talk to any comedian. That's great. All right, thank you, Matt Wilstein. Follow Matt at Matt Wilstein on Twitter. M a t t w i l. S T E I N. That's right. And the Laugh Last Pod on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, <clears throat> all right, Ed. Anything else you want to mention? Uh, well, you got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, you know what? This weekend, one more time. Where I'm in Milwaukee, right? Yeah. And with Kagan, Illinois, at the Genesee Theater and the Pabst Theater in Milwaukee. I think it's sold out. Uh, there might be a couple tickets in the in, in, but. The important point is, I hope the people that bought tickets aren't afraid to come. Um, um, tweet me if you're if you want to, and I'll and I'll try to stay in touch with the, with the people coming out this weekend in case there's any weird shit that goes down. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm feeling good. I'm ready. You know, I don't know what the situation is in those places, but it's not that bad there. Good. So me and Dave, we're coming fully fucking loaded for this shit, man. This could be our last shows of the year if this shit spreads. So <laughs> we are fucking coming in. Um, bumping mics live. We're going to be in Des Moines, Iowa at the Hoyt Sherman Place in April. Kansas City, April 4th. 
at the Uptown Theater. I've wanted to play Kansas City for a long time. Good people in Kansas City. April 16th, back in my home neighborhood in Morristown, New Jersey. Mayo Performing Art Center. April 17th in Tarrytown, New York at Tarrytown Music Hall. April 18th in Pennsylvania, Mun Hall. Whatever the f- I don't know what that is. Carnegie. You know what? Ed, cancel that one. <laughs> I'm not going to Mun Hall. Carnegie of Homestead Music Hall. It's like they have three names. I couldn't figure out what to, what to call it. Did, did they Carnegie of Homestead Music Hall. What? They told you you were booking Carnegie Hall? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good one, Matt. Finally, he's funny. Two hours later. Great. April 24th and twi- 25th. Me and Atel bumping mics in California at the Brea Improv to warm up for our big shows at the Comedy Store. Um, the last Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of April, live at the Comedy Store, bumping mics. What should we call it? Bumping mics Hollywood? Bumping mics 2? The bumping. The bumping. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's a winner. That's pretty good. <laughs> that should be the name of our tour. Bumping Mike's 2, The Bumping. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Also, right after that, you're going to be in Santa Ynez, California, at the Chumash Casino. That's on May 1st. That's up near Santa Barbara. That sounds like a fun place to hang for the weekend. That's a nice place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Santa Ynez. And then in the end of May, May 30th, you're going to be at the Orleans Showroom in Las Vegas. And all the way out August 1st, you're going to be at the Borgata in Atlantic City. Are you fucking kidding me? At the Music Box, baby. I love it. You can check out that and all things Jeff Ross at RoastmasterGeneral.com. Go and pick up your emotional support human shirt there. And the I'm Offended by People Who Are Always Offended baseball tees and mugs. Uh, check. Uh, keep an eye on the calendar because more dates are always a coming. <laughs> Uh, check out Jeff on Cameo. Get him to say hi to your sister for her birthday. Fuck your sister. See? That's what you need. <laughs> Rate and review us on iTunes. Subscribe to us on the YouTube page. Email us at thickskinwithjeffross at gmail.com. Twitter at thickskincast. Instagram thickskinwithjeffross. Stop Jeff Ross. sending nudes. <laughs> How many times do I have to say it? Yeah. Stop oh. sending nudes. Yes. Send them to at Last Laugh Pod. <laughs> we want your tops covered. The bottoms are okay to be nude. Uh, Real Jeffrey Ross on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Ed Larson at Eddie Tunes underscore on Twitter. Eddie Tunes on Instagram and my other podcast, The Brighter Side, on the Last Podcast Network exclusively on Spotify. That's it, buddy. Um, that was a lot of fun. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, guys. You guys you guys killed it. Folks, <clears throat> we'll see you next time on Thick Skin. Life is hard, but don't worry. We're getting through it together. Bye. Damn. I'm in New York. Talking the talk. I'm doing the podcast. Full tank of gas. Uh-huh. I got cousin Ed and Gary too. I got the thick skin blues. <laughs> Having a drink. My armpits stink. Hey. <laughs> I'm feeling so good, I'm in the hood, I don't want it to end. I got the thick skin blues. Thick skin blues. <laughs> <laughs>